I'm very grateful for your presence tonight. We feel that an important part of our activity is an educational role, and I'd like to welcome you here, and I'd also like to welcome our invitees from other places, uh, Peter Clifton, Cara Volkswain, and uh, Peter Gibson, as well as our own uh, Andre Lagerche, Merlin Thomas, and Rebecca Stiegler. So uh, this series that we call Health Matters is a public lecture series which uh, we started in May of this year. We started off with a presentation on hereditary coronary disease. Um, and I, I thought the turnout there was wonderful. I was involved in that uh, presentation and the interaction in particular was great. And I hope that, um, that you interact with this panel tonight on this very uh, interesting topic about low carb and gluten free diets. Um, I'm very grateful to our sponsors, the Art Series Hotel Group and the Cullen, uh, who are helping us throughout this series. We will be having another two uh, presentations later in the year, and if you want to get in touch with our team uh, to find out the content of them, uh, please do see them afterwards or email them. We will make a version of this available online uh, as well for, for your friends or people you want to communicate with. Um, Baker IDI is an independent research institute. Um, about half of our money comes from competitive funds for research. We receive uh, money from philanthropic sources from the community, uh, yourselves, uh, and from commercial activities, uh, including intellectual property. Um, we're very grateful for whatever support you're able to provide us. The um, philanthropic team have uh, got together a number that you can use for uh, sending uh, some support to us and um, they'll give you some information about that at the end of the presentations. So my colleague uh, Professor Merlin Thomas is going to be looking after the session this afternoon and uh, Merlin, uh, I'd like you to welcome you to the stage and Merlin will uh, tell you about the things that you'll be hearing about this evening and how uh, the session will work. Merlin. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again for your attendance this evening. It's not surprising that we have a symposium tonight uh, focusing uh, on bread and baking. After all, our name, The Baker, doesn't actually come from a guy who did a little bit of cooking. But in fact, 90 years ago, Thomas Baker got together with his next door neighbour just across his fence and said, well, maybe we can improve people's health by helping them understand what's important. And that's when he set up the Baker Institute. His expertise uh, was in photography and subsequently in philanthropy. Um, but now he's set up us as an institute to talk about the important things that matter. When we talk about our daily bread, I just don't mean our usual daily bread that you talk about here, but actually bread. You'll find that in Australia, the number one food across Australia is bread, cereals, and products containing wheat more than any other food that we eat lots of or we eat frequently, um, bread really is the number one. But should we? Should we be doing this or should we be eating something else? Well, hopefully tonight we'll be able to answer some of those questions. We've been able to assemble an expert panel to talk about the key issues about why people should not use or should have carbs in their diet and whether they need to or not. But to understand why this might be the case, we're going to do the first thing that we as scientists do, which is to drill a little bit deeper, to go under the surface of the bread, to understand what happens when we decide not or not, not to have that uh, loaf of bread or that piece of bread. One of the first things that we know is that bread, if you look at the nutrition label, is predominantly starch. This is a carbohydrate. Essentially, it's a long chain of sugar, all matched together, like a, exactly like a chain. And this, when it is released into our intestine and subsequently digested, releases sugar in exactly the same way that eating table sugar does overall into your diet. So when you consider its impact in your diet, it's very similar. So we're worried about the sugar in our system. We're also worried about the calories that that conveys. Of course, that's not all that's inside that piece of bread. There is also a substantial amount of fiber, resistant starch, and fermentable sugar. This is not available to us in terms of our nutrition, but is certainly available to the gut bacteria 
who substantially, lots of it, enjoy it very much, and it improves their health. But it also influences their ability to make gas and cause bloating as well. The other important thing that's contained in that piece of bread is protein. Although we much likely think of that piece of bread as purely sugar, protein is a, co is a major component of it. And of that protein, a major component of that is gluten, a substance which is absolutely essential not only for uh, wheat to do their job, but if you ever wondered why a loaf of bread can rise in your oven and can stay up there over a period of time, is beautifully textured and enjoyable, that is the gluten. If you remove gluten from bread and don't substitute anything else, your bread is either flat, crumbly, or not very tasty. So gluten's very important. But at the same time, you'll hear tonight, some people are allergic to the protein components of gluten, of, of, uh, of wheat. And other people respond to gluten in their diet um, by uh, a reaction known as celiac disease, which is a major and significant illness affecting somewhere between 1% to 2% of Australians. And that comes from the protein component of the bread. And of course, there are other things as well that we get. We get the minerals, such as iron and zinc. We get vitamins and antioxidants from the bread that we have every day. And at the same time, our major single source of salt in our diet is not our salt shakers, but in fact the bread that we eat. So how do we balance all of these things? Take the good and the bad and put them all together and make a decision about whether or not we're going to have that extra slice of bread, whether or not we're going to have pasta or other kinds of things as well. But it's more than just that balance. Of course, it's just uh, one thing is, of course, the devil we know, the salt, the carbs, the gluten. But of course, if we substitute it with something else, what else are we going to substitute it with? And how devilish is that going to be? Now, I hope you're all confused, because I certainly am at the moment. There's a lot to think about. But again, I've got my ple it's my pleasure to introduce a number of speakers tonight who are going to focus on the key issues surrounding carbs in your diet and the reasons why you might or might not wish to avoid them. We're going to cover a number of issues, whether carbs are important for weight loss, whether carbs are important to settle our stomach, which is the major single reason of people saying, I don't like carbs because I've got a starchy feeling when I eat too many of it. Some people obviously can't take wheat products because of celiac disease. We've got people who eat more carbs to enhance their physical performance, particularly for endurance exercise. And of course, carbs are very important for not only preventing diabetes, but also managing those things. All of those issues and more, and all of your questions hopefully at the end, will be answered for you. So to begin with, I'd like to introduce you to Peter Clifton, who's going to focus for us on carbs and losing weight. Peter.